Hey everyone, this is Matthew from Nerd News Today. One of my favorite movies of all time is the 1984 blockbuster, Ghostbusters. It still holds up today and is often a case study for people studying the craft of making films, whether it be analyzing script structure, special effects, or whatever. It's a franchise that has had its share of good, bad, and ugly over the decades, but we finally have what fans have been waiting for, the next chapter of the original Ghostbusters. So grab some Ecto Cooler and a Twinkie, because here is everything we know so far in January about the new Ghostbusters movie. This is going to be a new monthly series on this channel, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on all the news, as well as check out all of our other nerdy content. Now, without further ado, let's kick things off at the most logical place, the beginning. On January 15th, Entertainment Weekly broke the news that Jason Reitman was at the helm to direct and co-write a new Ghostbusters movie set in the same world as the original series. Jason is the son of Ivan Reitman, the director of the original movies, and an acclaimed director in his own right. More importantly, he was the yuppie larva that pissed off Ray in Ghostbusters 2. Jason was quoted as saying, I've always thought of myself as the first Ghostbusters fan, when I was a six-year-old visiting the set. I wanted to make a movie for all the other fans. This is the next chapter in the original franchise. It's not a reboot. What happened in the 80s happened in the 80s, and this is set in the present day. Ivan Reitman will also be producing the movie with his son, and was very excited to pass the torch to his boy. Later on, Jason put up a post on Instagram posing behind the Ecto-1, writing that he finally got the keys to the car. How's that for a family dynasty? The article went on to mention they had a summer 2020 release date planned, and the company intended to start shooting the new film very soon. Gil Keenan was also announced as on board to write the film with Jason. Keenan directed the animated feature of Monster House, as well as City of Ember and the Poltergeist remake in 2015. As for who would be starring in it, it was a bit too early to say much about that. But he did have this to say, This is very early and I want the film to unwrap like a present. We have a lot of wonderful surprises and new characters for the audience to meet. It wasn't long before the working title for the new movie was also discovered, which is Rust City. It's also calling the movie Ghostbusters 3, so hey, that's something. Along with that working title, a log line was also revealed, which states the one sentence version of the movie, which is, a family moves back home to a small town where they learn more about who they are. While it's pretty vague, it's also a pretty major clue potentially about the new story, and in my eyes means this Ghostbusters might not happen in a big city. Instead, this might be taking place in a small rural town. So I'm kind of thinking this is going to be Ghostbusters meets Stranger Things, and I'm okay with that so far. As early as this may be in production for the film, things began to move quickly after that. One day after the announcement, Entertainment Weekly got another exclusive scoop, and this one shook the internet. Sony released a teaser video for the new movie, one that personally still gives me goosebumps whenever I see it, and even right now as I'm talking to you about it. The teaser had everything fans needed to hear and see in it, from that original Elmer Bernstein score to the familiar sound of a proton gun, and the epic reveal of that very distinctive Ecto-1. The big question now is whose barn is that, and who is working on a proton gun inside it? Could it be Ray Stance? At this point, your guess is as good as mine. Interesting thing that I noticed, the Ecto-1 shown here has the original license plate from 1984, not the 1989 plate with the Statue of Liberty on it from Ghostbusters 2, or a modern-style New York plate. Not sure what that means yet, if it means anything at all, but it's just something to keep an eye on. Two days later, Jason put up a post on Instagram explaining a little bit about how the teaser was made, specifically the text, which was done with physical effects by hand by Gareth Smith, using the original stencil from the first Ghostbusters movie. They then used actual smoke and light to create the effect, which many are considering a positive sign that the movie may rely on some classic effects and less CG. Smith worked together with Reitman on his first flick, doing the titles for Juno, and he has quite a resume of title design, so perhaps he'll be helping on the final product to design the look of how Ghostbusters 2020 opens. As if that wasn't enough, the following day saw a report from the Daily Mail that said Ernie Hudson, aka Winston Zedmore from the original series, would return in the new film along with Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray. They also directly quoted Ernie from the four-year consideration NAACP Image Awards screening in Beverly Hills, where he said he believed a new film could work even without Harold Ramis. Whether the studio will do it or, I mean, I'm, I'm the, the guy who, you know, sits by the phone and wait for the call. So if they call, I'm, I'll answer. Well, Ernie, please answer that call. However, on January 23rd, Hudson conducted a new interview on the Johnny Dare radio show, saying, in fact, that no one had reached out to him yet to appear in the new film. Oh, nobody approached me with a contract. So, um, but I was really excited uh, when I heard. Of course, Hudson is interested and ready to be a part of the film. 
So fingers crossed that the original crew will be a major part of it. On January 18th, The Hollywood Reporter added some new details to the plot, claiming that their sources say the new film will focus on four teens, two boys, two girls, and continue the story of 1984's Ghostbusters and the 1989 sequel. It also added that this movie would ignore the 2016 Paul Feig directed film Ghostbusters Answer the Call. While many fans were ecstatic about that bit of news, many others were upset about it. One of those people was one of the stars of that 2016 film, Leslie Jones. On Twitter, the SNL star wrote, So insulting, like f us. We didn't count. It's like something Trump would do. Gonna redo Ghostbusters. Better with men will be huge. These women ain't Ghostbusters. Ugh, so annoying. Such a dick move. And I don't give a f I'm saying something. Leslie clarified the comments further two days later, a period that had many internet trolls attacking her over what she wrote. She added, It's very sad that this is a response I get, when the point is if they make this new one with all men and it does well, which it will, it might feel that boys are better. It makes my heart drop. Maybe I could have used different words, but I'm allowed to have my feelings just like them. Paul Fagg also wrote in and said, Leslie spoke her truth and I support her. I'm very open to Jason's new version of Ghostbusters, but I'm also sad that our 2016 team may not get to bust again. We all are. We're forever proud of our movie. Jason had actually complimented the Paul Feig film days earlier, saying the only reason the films wouldn't link to each other is because Feig's film created an original timeline. On January 25th, things got a little more finite for the new movie, when Sony Pictures formally announced the release date of July 10th, 2020, giving an exact day to the vague timeline announced previously. On January 26th, HN Entertainment wrote a story detailing that casting was already underway, and child actor Sarah Abbott had auditioned for one of the kid roles. The 12 year old Canadian recently starred in an episode of Black Mirror, and leaked audition tapes revealed that she was trying out to be the socially awkward 12 year old who was very interested in science and not so good at making friends. Daniel Rickman of Super Bro Movies added that she was on top of the breakdown list, which means she is likely the main character of the film. So that's everything we know so far through January about the new Ghostbusters movie, and there's a lot to take in. Make sure to like, share, and of course, please subscribe if you want to check out these monthly reports and all of our other videos here at Nerd News Today. We've got many exciting months ahead of us, and I hope you'll stick around to enjoy the hype with me and all the other ghost heads out there. I'm Matthew from Nerd News Today, and we will see you guys next month with more Ghostbusters 2020 news.